braided rivers leave a distinctive set of facies behind with deposition that's tied very closely to the dynamics of how the sediment's transported and deposited within the channels. So the channels and braided rivers migrate back and forth, and the deepest part of the flow uh, has the coarsest grain sediments. But as the channels migrate, they're eroding away the bars. And so if we plot uh, a typical sequence of rocks, starting with zero at the uh, base of a channel, it's eroding the bar on one side, so it's usually an erosional surface. And the coarsest grain sediments are at the bottom. And now the, the coarsest grain size that's in a braided river depends on the river itself. We'll make ours have cobbles here. And the cobbles can accumulate. They get deposited, brought in by floods and accumulate. And so this right here represents the base deposits at the base of the channel. As the uh, beds accumulate, the water gets uh, shallower, the bar, bar migrates to the side, and so they, they often fine upward. Uh, usually the flow is so fast that you might not deposit very much of this finer sand. Um, so we'll, we'll make ours end uh, that looks like about coarse sand. And if we think about the sedimentary structures down here, there might be some uh, planar lamination, but uh, the trough cross stratification is more common. As you get further up uh, into uh, the area here, you can end up with ripples. Or if you remember the bed form diagram, the, uh, you get, start to get planar lamination and finer grains um, at a lower flow speed, and so you might actually have some upper planar laminations um, in some of the sediment here. Okay. So in general, what this change in the, ch in the channel facies are showing is a fining upward of the sediment and a change in the grain size. So that this is at the base of the channel. This part is uh, deposited on a bar that's migrating into that area. Okay. And so then at some point, this the top of the bar might be exposed a little bit. And then the next flood comes. And the flow speed might be fast enough that uh, this gets eroded, or it could be that just another channel migrates into this area and this will end up eroded, right? and the thicknesses vary. So this would be, uh, the, again, the base of a channel, the main part of a channel, finding upward onto the bar. So this would be another channel deposit, and then this would be a channel deposit as well. So if we were going to define uh, facies for a braided river channel, the characteristics would include the sedimentary structures, the grain size, and their relationships to each other. So we could define them as being um, a group of rocks. The facies, the channel facies of a braided river could be a group of rocks that typically has a scoured surface at the base um, with gravel or cobble uh, lag deposit or conglomerate and they fine upward with a cr trough cross stratification, upper planar lamination and current ripples in correspondingly uh, finer uh, grain sizes. So that's the, the, the channel facies themselves but we also have overbank deposits and so the over uh, bank deposits, because the water is still flowing, usually consist of sand and silt plus soil and if it's post-Devonian and on earth, uh, vegetation. Okay. They can if there is some mud uh, present, they can include things like uh, mud cracks as well.
Thanks for watching.